Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening from wherever you are joining in to see this World Economic Forum Sustainable Development Impact Summit session on Uplink, Scaling Local Innovation for Sustainable Development. My name is Dominic Warre. I'm a Managing Director at the World Economic Forum, and it is my pleasure and privilege to MC us through the first part of this session, which is a panel discussion. We've got a super group lined up for you, and we're thrilled to be joined um, on my left by Professor Klaus Schwab, who is the Founder and Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum, by Simon McCulhey, who's the Chief Innovation Officer of Salesforce, by Michelle Parmelee, the Deputy Global Chief Executive Officer and the Global Chief People and Purpose Officer of Deloitte, USA of Deloitte, and Nicole Bishop, who is the founder and CEO of Quartolio, an uplink innovator. Um, we'll be talking in particular about the importance of innovation in achieving these sustainable development goals, and in particular to introduce you to an innovation accelerator called Uplink, which Salesforce, Deloitte, and the World Economic Forum have been collaborating on. Uplink was announced this time last year in the SDG Action Zone at the UN headquarters and launched at the annual meeting in Davos in January 2020. In this panel, we'll learn a little bit more about Uplink and the impact it has had since then, in particular in relation to the COVID-19 response, forests and the ocean. So I'm delighted to welcome you all, a global audience streaming this session live through our platforms and also our audience joining us through Toplink. I must tell you as well that there is more on Uplink tomorrow. We will be holding an Uplink session tomorrow afternoon, Geneva time, to select the winners of our Trillion Trees Challenge, where you'll be able to help us choose the People's Choice Award through online voting. You can find more details at uplink.wefforum.org. So, with no further ado, um, let's get started. Uh, Professor Klaus Schwab, Founder and Executive Chairman of the World Economic Forum, perhaps you can kick us off. You've been a digital pioneer and a champion for entrepreneurialism in the global interest for many years. Uplink seems to bring these two ideas together, especially in relation to meeting the SDGs. Could you tell us a little bit more? Thank you very much and uh, welcome to all of you. I'm very proud that so many people joined us for this important uh, session. Uh, it's right, just a year ago, we actually inaugurated, we started Uplink, um, Uplink uh, by signing a strategic uh, cooperation framework agreement with the United Nations. And one of the uh, issues which came up is how can we uh, the forum, which is a multi-stakeholder organization, but how can we engage all those entrepreneurial talents around the world behind the SDGs? How can we create a digital platform which allows those young people, those entrepreneurial, innovative people, really to contribute with solutions to the big issues which we have in our world today? So we developed the platform and I would like to thank um, uh, our partners, which made it possible, um, Salesforce and uh, Deloitte, represented here by Simon Malkai and, and Michel Pameli. Great thank you, because without you, this platform would not exist. I also want to thank uh, John Dutton and his team uh, in the forum who worked very hard, not only to get the technology right, but also to fill the platform with life. And I'm very proud of what we have achieved in a relatively short uh, time. I suppose that um, uh, Dr. Goodell will um, join us uh, later, I hope so. But in any case, um, preparing for this session I have found a quote of her, which I think is very characteristic um, for how we developed uh, Uplink. We will only attain the growth potential, she says, of the great reset when head and heart work in harmony. So let's take our heads and our hearts during um, the next uh, 60 minutes and apply it to the further success of Uplink. 
Back to you, Dominic. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Schwab. And this vision that has been turned into reality over the past several months has truly been quite astonishing. Um, it's evolved from an aspirational idea uplink to a live digital platform with nearly 4,000 entrepreneurs, change makers, experts, and investors. Uh, already over 500 solutions that are proposing innovative approaches to ocean, reforestation, and COVID-19 challenges related to the SDGs. And in fact, the social posts from Uplink have been seen by nearly 30 million people around the world and have created a real pathway for engaging with the forum's mission. So we're very, very excited about the impact um, that has been created already. I think it's early days. Uh, you know, we are starting to see some of the uh, outcomes um, advancing, but perhaps Simon Mackay, uh, together with your founder and CEO at Salesforce, Mark Benioff, you guys have been a champion of Uplink and its vision since the origin of the concept. And Salesforce, of course, has such a massive network of customers and corporate engagement and drives for purpose and a desire for the impact on the sustainable development goals, like the ocean, like the Trillion Trees Initiative, like on COVID, like on social justice and reskilling, among many other areas. Perhaps you could explain what drives the involvement of Salesforce in Uplink for you um, on these sorts of issues. Simon, over to you. Thanks, Dominic. Well, at Salesforce, we, we believe strongly that the business, that business is the greatest platform for change. And we really view the environment as one of our key stakeholders. And you can just see this over, over COVID-19, which has really magnified the whole issue of, of climate change. On the one hand, you've got you know, hundreds of millions, if not billions of people who are staying at home. And that's really given the planet a breather, including here in San Francisco. On the um, other hand though, we've really seen how global climate issues haven't subsided or slowed down. And we've got these astonishing weather swings in the Rocky Mountains, the most destructive wildfire season ever, at least by acreage on the west coast of the US. Uh, and so many hurricanes on the east coast that we're running out of names in the English language. Climate change is not a potential challenge, not just a potential challenge for future generations. It's real. It's a real pressing threat for our businesses, our economies um, in, in, the, in the near term. And I think global damage from 2.7 degrees of warming is estimated to be $54 trillion. So now more than ever, we need innovative solutions that are driven by partnerships. And our ability to scale innovation will therefore require unprecedented coordination and communication across the globe. An uplink, thanks to the incredible vision of Professor, Professor Schwab and the leadership, Dominic of you and, and, and John Dutton, provides the framework to make that happen, connect incredible entrepreneurs with the capital regulatory power and know-how that they need. And it's urgent. We're near a tipping point and, you know, whether the impacts of, of climate change are going to be irreversible. Simon, thank you for that and for reminding us about the urgency of the context in which uh, we face things. And you mentioned entrepreneurs um, and how one can bring them together through a digital platform of Uplink. Let's turn to one which um, has been uh, engaged through Uplink and is an Uplink innovator, Nicole Bishop, founder and CEO of Quartolio. Um, Nicole, uh, perhaps you could um, uh, chat to us a little bit about um, uh, how you've been working on various issues out there in relation to uh, some of the purpose-driven outcomes that you seek and how you've experienced the Uplink network. Um, and what's your in, 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 motivation for getting involved? Because I think it's quite interesting to hear, if you like, from those who've been experiencing the platform for others who are listening and such. Nicole. Absolutely, thank you, Dominic. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you to uh, each of you for creating the platform. It's a necessary uh, avenue for entrepreneurs to have a space where we can connect and not only entrepreneurs in general, but those with a like mind focused on impacting the world. Uh, my own journey with Cortolio stems from a desire to connect the world's research. And so when we saw COVID, uh, we wanted to essentially put our resources into analyzing the scientific articles, clinical trials, patents, and everything that we could, all the different data sets and bring those together in order to bring insight to researchers sooner. And the Uplink platform parallels that very much by essentially bringing together like minds and bringing those connections together. So we've been appreciative of the experience on Uplink and look forward to connecting with 
like-minded entrepreneurs, but also partners and potential investors as well. Nicole, thank you for that. And congratulations on the great work that you are doing. I mean, when we uh, conceived and started to design Uplink, we didn't anticipate um, a world like we have today with the COVID pandemic and the other issues that it's revealed in terms of social justice challenges, the economic challenges. Um, but Michelle Parmalee at Deloitte, I mean, Deloitte and yourself in particular, you've been supporting Uplink since it was uh, conceived over a year ago. And Deloitte, you know, you're a, you're a hugely purpose-driven company pushing hard on ESG issues and many other areas of purpose. So what excites um, you and the Deloitte leadership team about the sort of digital innovation interface, the innovation accelerators and the Uplink platform for the SDGs? Michelle. Oh, I can't. No, it wasn't letting me unmute myself, but I'm here now. Uh, ah, here thanks, we are, Michelle. Thanks, I gave, Dominic. I gave you a chance to think about the question. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing some hand motions. Unmute me. Um, no, thanks for that question. And, and that's, that's right. I mean, Deloitte is a uh, purpose-led organization. Our purpose is to make an impact that matters. We say make an impact on our clients, on our people, on the communities where we live and work. And our purpose recognizes that in times of uncertainty, society looks to business to, uh, to lead the way. And so we believe we have a responsibility to respond and we wanna be a force of good in this world, but we know we cannot do it alone. We know that solving the world's biggest challenges such as social inequality, joblessness, the climate crisis, Simon spoke to that, requires that we work across sectors, requires that we work across generations because it's when we can bind our strengths that we can deliver the kind of end-to-end -end solutions that today's problems require. And you know, Deloitte has collaborated with the World Economic Forum for more than 20 years. And we were honored to join it and Salesforce to support Uplink. And we are proud to have contributed our technology expertise and our execution capabilities. And what we have built together is a one of a kind platform that connects SDG innovators and entrepreneurs, many of which are non-traditional contributors to other like-minded groups like funders. And so Uplink enables the collaboration, the connection that we believe is so fundamental to accelerating action towards the SDGs. And we believe that the impact that we are making and will be able to make through Uplink is not anything that Deloitte or any of us could, achieve, could have achieved on our own. Michelle, thank you very much. And thank you again for the collaboration and partnership. It's been truly extraordinary to be able to leverage all the fantastic assets and knowledge that Deloitte and Salesforce have um, to um, uh, help people like Nicole and 4,000 others uh, get to a kind of global set of interactions, which might not have been possible uh, before. Um, in that context, I think um, uh, Dr. Jane Goodall is now with us. Uh, Jane, are you there? I've ac actually been with you right from the, almost the beginning before uh, Dr. Schwab left. Fantastic. Well, it's good to see you, um, and um, it's wonderful to have you with us. So thank you for joining us. Um, now, you've been someone who everybody knows has been inspiring change for decades, especially in the environmental and reforestation agenda, and including in particular community-led involvement to respond to the challenges that Simon and Michelle and Nicole um, were, were talking about. Um, we were delighted, in fact, to launch with you the Trillion Trees Initiative um, back in Davos in January. So perhaps you could tell us all about the scale of the challenges you feel we face and how these new kinds of digital innovations which can connect together so many communities and individuals like Uplink can help uh, communities and others to mobilize, engage and innovate at scale. Dr. Goodall. Well, first of all, I, I, I'm sorry that um, Klaus Schwab has left because I wanted to thank him so much for putting the environment up at, at, you know, high up in the priorities of the Economic World Forum in Davos this year. And that's really made a difference. And also Mark Benioff, but jumping in to help support the Trillion Tree Challenge. Well, about the Uplink, the Uplink program, 
you, nobody can do it these days by themselves. We face unprecedented crisis in the world today. Uh, first of all, there's the right now, the pandemic. And the tragedy is that this pandemic has been predicted. And in, to some extent, it's been caused by us because we've disrespected the natural world. We've disrespected animals. We've created environments which make it much easier for a pathogen to jump from an animal to a human where it may cause a new disease, a zoonotic disease as it's called, such as COVID-19. Unfortunately, COVID-19 was incredibly contagious and has raced around the world causing so much havoc, so much suffering, so much economic chaos. But at the same time, all the time we have been we have been threatened by a much greater challenge, and that is climate change. And to, to a great extent, it's the same disrespect of the natural world that has led to this, this climate crisis, because this planet has finite natural resources, and we've been plundering them in many places faster than Mother Nature can restore them. And we have to realize that we are part of the natural world and we depend upon the natural world. And we have been destroying the natural world. We've been destroying the forests, trees that can absorb carbon dioxide. We've been polluting the ocean, the ocean that can also absorb carbon dioxide. And both forests and the oceans give us the oxygen we need to breathe. We're in the midst of the sixth great extinction we depend on healthy ecosystems and the healthy ecosystem depends on the biodiversity. And gradually we are poisoning the land with chemicals and as well as destroying forests and oceans, we're destroying so many other environments. And so both of these major crises that we're in the midst of right now, but in particular climate crisis, which threatens the future of all life on the planet, including human existence, if we don't get together when we emerge from the pandemic and join hands. And that's why Linked Up is so important because we can't do it alone. We need everybody who cares about the future generations to link up and try and work out a new green economy that is less destructive of the environment upon which we depend and somehow move into renew non-renewable. I mean, we, we need to move into some of these innovations of science like solar, wind and, and tide energy. Otherwise, for my grandchildren and theirs, the future is more than grim, it's very dark. We mustn't let that happen. We have a window of time which is closing and we need everybody who cares to get together and find solutions now. Dr. Jane Goodall, thank you for those uh, very moving um, and profound words. Uh, I suppose if I could follow up, if I may, uh, a, a question uh, for you. I mean, over the time that you've spent working on these issues, I guess on the one hand, you've seen us not learn the lessons um, and humanity is destroying more and more of its natural resource base, not getting better, but perhaps getting worse. Um, but at the same time, these incredible changes in technology and in the ability to connect together digitally um, and that ability to perhaps mobilize hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions um, across communities of networks. Does that offer hope, would you say, from all of your time and work on, on these issues? And if so, is that the sort of thing that Uplink can perhaps inspire to create the mobilization of the millions that we might need to solve this challenge? Yes, I think, you know, let me preface my remarks by saying there's three major challenges we have to overcome. And one is poverty, because while people are living in abject poverty, they're going to destroy the environment to grow food, to feed their family, fish the last fish, for the same reason, buy the cheapest junk food they can't afford to say, did this harm the environment? We have to solve the problem of the unsustainable lifestyles of the rest of us. 
And we have to recognize that right now there are 7.2 billion people on the planet and already we're using up natural resources in some places, as I've said, faster than nature can restore them. In 2050, it's estimated there'll be nearly 10 billion of us. So what's going to happen? We cannot afford just to put that aside because it's politically incorrect. We've got to think about it. So to come more directly to your, to your question, when I flew over the tiny National Gombe Park, where I've been studying chimpanzees and my team since 1960, it, when I flew over in 1990, the tiny National Park, which had been part of the great, um, the great equatorial forest belt that stretched across Africa was a tiny island of forest surrounded by completely bare hills, more people living there than the land could support, too poor to buy food from elsewhere, over farmed uh, land. And that's when it hit me. If we don't help these people find ways of making a living without destroying the environment, we can't save the chimps or anything else. And so we began a program involving the local people right from the start uh, called Take Care of Takari. And these, the, the 104 villages now involved in this program where people are learning about agroforestry, about permaculture, about tree nurseries, about all the different ways that they can make a living without destroying the forest. One, they've understood that protecting the forest is protecting their own future, not just wildlife. And two, in all of these 104 villages, there are volunteers who've been to our workshops and learn to use smartphones. This is technology for you. And they go into the forest reserves in their villages, which is where most of the wild chimps and other animals are quite unprotected and they monitor the health of the forest. They're very proud of their work. It gets uploaded into a platform on the clouds and it's worked. So if you fly over Gombe today, you don't see those bare hills. The forest has come back. And we've got this program in six other African countries. And a major part of it is, involved, is, is scholarships to keep girls in school during and after puberty and empowering women by enabling to, to get small grants from microcredit programs based on the work of one of my heroes, Mohammed Yunus and the Grameen Bank. And this has made the, the villages in all of these seven countries our partners in conservation. It's all ready to be scaled up and technology and our amazing brains that's what can help us scale it up with satellite imagery, GIS, GPS, and of course, funding. Jane, thank you so much. That's, that, um, it's quite inspiring in terms of the potential, certainly that uh, you've seen and you've experienced of how the digital uh, capability through smartphones and things can connect smaller uh, communities and uh, 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 locally based activities into a much bigger mobilization, which is, as you say, the, the link upward, the uplink kind of core element of the, of the, of the platform. Perhaps um, Simon and Michelle, we can turn back to you because there's something very interesting, isn't there, in, in, in here about um, the small scale uh, entrepreneur or innovator, community-based initiative, startup, um, uh, but it's not small scale because lots and lots connected together is a massive change. And I wonder, through um, your journey and experiences with Uplink, uh, Simon, Michelle, there's been any particular uh, uh, startup or, or individual entrepreneur that, that's caught your eye? Maybe, Simon, we could start, start with you first. Yeah, um, great question. Actually, there are so many phenomenal entrepreneurs. And I know that I think tomorrow there's going to be a big focus on, um, on trees. So there's, there's a couple there who are truly inspiring. So I'll I won't talk about the trees ones coming up, but certainly the oceans and the deep dive on oceans, there was one that really blew me away and that was Recyglo. So the CEO is uh, Shui Yamin U, who uh, founded Recyglo uh, three years ago in Myanmar. And what they do is they focus on recycling and, um, and waste solutions in Southeast Asia. 
This is a part of the world where, where that technology and those services are scarce. Um, and, and they basically target a region where they can really make a difference. And they're working hand in hand with companies operating in that region to institutionalize uh, recycling and sustainability as a norm for doing business. And I also love actually that they're, they're providing data and analytics on the, on the amount of, of uh, waste that's recycled and the impact of, on the carbon footprint. I think it's about 500 tons of waste that they're managing and they've saved like, 1500 uh, tons of CO2. And on top of that, they've educated nearly a million people uh, on, the, on the merits of proper recycling. So that's a really great example of, of what one small entrepreneur in Myanmar can do. Just think about all those others. It's a brilliant example, Simon. We were delighted to find them when we kind of put out the ocean and uh, uh, waste challenge on Uplink. I think that um, they came in on the plastic pollution solution set. And if I recall correctly, you might um, remember that uh, through a, a, a discussion like this, we had a, a global range of stakeholders watching and literally quite soon after, um, uh, those uh, entrepreneurs were put in contact with the um, city of Jakarta to uh, see if what they were doing in Myanmar couldn't be replicated uh, in Indonesia. And so the power of these connections, and of course that it gets uh, investors and, and others on the financing side interested, um, can go exponential quite quickly as, uh, as Jane was saying. So it just sort of goes to show how um, small innovations, if we can kind of find and connect together on a platform, can actually start to change the game quite dramatically. Um, Michelle, are there any other particular innovators or entrepreneurs or, 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 or startups that have caught your eye on the Uplink platform? Sure, I, I'd like to highlight one that, that, that came through the COVID innovation sprint. And, and specifically, the idea was submitted by Hello Better and their Calm Through the Crisis campaign. This campaign provides people with free, professional, psychological support from a fully digital solution. And at Deloitte, we recognize that one in four people experience poor mental health. And our annual research of millennials and Gen Zs has shown that 48% reported being anxious or stressed all or most of the time and 44% ranked mental health as their first or second priority in life. And half of those who took time off from work gave their employers a different reason than their true reason, which was mental health. So at Deloitte, we want all of our professionals to thrive. We know people are not at their best when they're experiencing poor mental health. And so positively enhancing mental health of our people through an inclusive and supportive environment is a global strategic priority for us. And COVID has only brought the urgency of mental health even more for the for, to the forefront, not just for us, but for all employers. And so let me come back to Hello Better and its solution and highlight two advantages which really, which really struck me. The first is that it enables self-service. So a person get assistance and information on their own. And this is important because as I shared earlier, people still face a stigma when it comes to mental ill health. And second, the information provided is evidence-based. And this is important because there are a lot of tools and apps out there to enable mental health, but an evidence-based approach, meaning it's grounded in what works, is really critical when it comes to effectiveness. So what I wanna say to conclude is kudos to Hello Better, right? First for submitting uh, an idea to our COVID challenge and specifically one that reminds us, especially in these times that it's okay to be not okay. And then second, for providing a very valuable tool to aid people in order for them to get access to help. Michelle, that's a brilliant, brilliant example. It's so, it's so exciting. I mean, for those who um, are listening in, the way we sort of structure this and uh, my colleague, John, I'm sure will talk more about it. Um, and you'll find more on the uh, Uplink website, uh, uplink.webforum.org, uh, is we have sprints. So um, for a short period of time, six weeks or so, maybe um, solutions to problems that people um, see in terms of the response to COVID or oceans issues. We heard about uh, uh, plastic pollution or how to upscale massively uh, the planting and restoration of trees and landscapes as uh, Dr. Jane Goodall was talking about. And what's really exciting about that 
is um, through the global reach of Uplink, all sorts of smaller, more purpose-driven initiatives or startups or um, ideas can be collated. And people like Simon or Jane Goodall or Michelle or others from actually, you know, the wide range of networks that we're able to curate at the World Economic Forum can find out, can connect together, can scale up and take things to an altogether new dimension of, of, of impact, which is which is really quite exciting. Um, to that extent, um, Nicole, coming back to you, I mean, you've sort of been part of this from the other side, and I wonder from um, your perspective, uh, what sort of reflections you might have about how we might uh, you know, expand our networks or what um, people like yourselves um, uh, who are engaged in that startup and innovation space are looking for from something like Uplink. Nicole, over to you. Thanks, Dominic. Well, this is a great start. Uh, the platform itself, uh, through it, I've been able to learn about a number of different uh, innovations as noted by uh, Simon. And uh, these innovations have the power to be essentially amplify each other. And by bringing us together, we can assist, essentially uh, assist each other in, 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 in that way with say, for instance, with Cortolio, uh, something that can connect the research that each innovation uh, each of the innovators is, is working on. So the access to each other as well as part, potential partners is something that's really vital for us to essentially scale up these, these, research, these resources, as well as access to additional data. Uh, it's really important for, uh, with the advent of, of COVID, for us to essentially get out there and get as much knowledge connected into the, to the researchers as, as possible. And Uplink provides that opportunity uh, by connecting us with partners, as well as uh, like-minded researchers and uh, innovators that we can essentially bring that together and, uh, excuse me, and, and bring those innovations together and, and, and leverage the platform in that way. Thanks, Nicole. Um, I think that's, that's excellent. Again, um, people like yourselves, uh, we would never have found uh, through our kind of usual networks at the World Economic Forum. So it's just a privilege and a pleasure to be able to make those connections and see what we can do uh, to help scale up. I have a favorite, um, which I'm going to take prerogative to, to, to talk about. I'm a kind of a sort of oceans water person a little bit by background. And we found this super outfit who also submitted through the Uplink uh, challenge uh, called Cubex Global. And these are, um, it's co-founded by um, a couple of young Pakistani entrepreneurs who are part of our global shapers community. I don't know if there's any global shapers who are tuning in and watching, kudos to you, chapeau. Um, but um, what they'd created was a digital marketplace uh, for sea freight that maximizes the empty shipping container space. Because when shipping containers go on the ship, it's not like they're always full. So in fact, you could be shipping big containers, but only half full of stuff. So if you can have, um, a smarter digital marketplace to fill up the gaps between all those uh, uh, shipping containers, a couple of things happen. First of all, it becomes a lot cheaper and more agile for you to ship things around the world. And secondly, it's a much more sustainable process for ocean transport because you've got less ships because you filled up all the ships of all the containers full up. And they've even run some numbers on how much uh, greenhouse gas emissions would be reduced, which are not insignificant. And in fact, Having done that, they're now um, going through their Series A round of financing, um, having been connected to the Forum Shipping Industry Group and others. So um, I just thought I'd get that one in because that was my favorite. We have, when we do these sprints, we have juries um, and they all start to vote. They're all very big experts and things and they start to vote on which ones they like. Um, I put that one forward as my one. It, um, the others voted for other things, but uh, I thought I'd use that to get my point across. Well done, Cubex. So there we are. See, all our, all our sponsors and champions have their uh, favorites. Um, listen, um, Dr. Jane Goodall, um, Michelle Parmelay, Simon Mikhalhi, um, and um, uh, Nicole, um, thank you so much uh, for your time um, and being with us for this, and thank you for your engagement with Uplink. If you are watching this and you're thinking, hmm, I reckon I've got a pretty good idea or two, um, or I'm actually running a sort of small shop, purpose-driven, I've got some entrepreneurial clout in me, I've given you um, the site before, uplink.wefforum.org. Get in touch. Get in touch to kind of put yourself forward in one of the sprints that we've got or generally become part of the community or indeed um, bring others who you know who are working in this space along. Because as we grow this network, we're on 4,000. Could it be 4 million? 
just imagine what that could do to triggering the change that we want to see across all of those SDGs and to finding a mobilization of bottom-up grassroots solutions to some of the things that we've heard about on this uh, discussion already. So um, I hope that gives you a flavor um, of Uplink. Um, and again, thank you to Nicole Bishop, Michelle Parmalee, Simon McCohey, and uh, our Professor Klaus Schwab, a founder and executive chairman at the World Open Forum, Jane Goodall, of course. Um, what we're gonna do now is play a little film to give you a little bit more of a feel for Uplink. And then from here on, my colleague, John Dutton, who heads the Uplink initiative, uh, will take forward the next part of the conversation. So for this segment, thanks again to the panelists. Thank you for listening. I hope it's got your juices going and you're already starting to submit your um, applications to join the Uplink community. Um, and with that, um, let us move to the film. Thank you very much indeed.